What's going on guys? My name is William Doria. Here on this channel we learn about personal finance and investing in real estate. So what the gurus don't tell you about investing in real estate, they do talk about the bad, don't they? Today we're going to talk about the good and the bad, including this horror story about investing in real estate. Let's dive into it. So I first found this property on Zillow. Here it is here. Okay. And I found this property on the MLS, uh, which is the multiple listing service. And it had a really, really low starting bid. It was starting at just $60,000. It's a four bedroom house. And I went to go look at it in person and I walked through. It looked really good. It had a couple repairs, a couple little cracks in the ceiling. You know, it looks like somebody was was in, in the attic and uh, stepped off of one of the rafters, you know. So um, I didn't see a whole lot of uh, indication of foundation issues, something like that. But here's the kicker. No inspections are allowed. I said that. No inspections are allowed. You are literally bidding based off of your personal knowledge with no inspection allowed at all. So, like I said, I walked through, it looked pretty good. And a couple days later, I went to go ahead and uh, bid on the auction site. Now, I should have seen it coming. With an auction starting price of just $60,000, basically my first initial reaction was, holy <laughs> that is cheap but they had to start it low to generate some interest because if i would have listened a little harder i probably would have heard a gunshot in the background telling me that this was a bad neighborhood to start with however i did look at my numbers the numbers made sense but this street in particular was just a little rougher than i should have been bidding on in the first place and this property was going to cost me a ton of money in future repairs. So I started bidding on auction. 60,000, 61, 62, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 86, 87, 88. I wanted it. That was my last bid. And of course I want it for the absolute most I was willing to pay. Go figure, right? So I went in and I went through with my contractor. We got all the repairs uh, that we deemed necessary done. Uh, we checked the uh, the water heater, make sure the water heater worked, and uh, we you know we walked the property from you know basically every inch, make sure that everything was functioning, and uh, went to my property manager and said, hey, I got this property. Uh, looks like it'll rent for twelve fifty. Here are my comps in the area, and um, yeah, my comps were in that area except for that street, in particular, was not going to be renting for twelve fifty a month. No, that one was more like ten fifty a month. Now, as a new investor, I didn't know this because, well, guess what? I got into this and I said, "Hey, I'm gonna read books and I'm gonna I'm gonna learn as I go." And really, that's what I was doing. This was one of my first properties that I bought, and well, I learned, you know, that just because I ran comps, I need to talk to the professionals that are in my pocket basically go to your your property manager and sit down and say look i'm about to pull the trigger on this deal and i'm thinking about using you guys anyways to manage my property what do you think it'll be renting for and they'll tell you they'll actually pull up your street your bedroom count your bathroom count and they'll tell you exactly what they think in their professional opinion what it'll be renting for from the first place i should have just did that i didn't i looked at my comps i said the comps no better and well, I got $200 less per month than I should have been. Okay, so the tenant's in there, it's about six months later. I wanna show you a before picture so you know that I didn't buy a property with horrendous issues to begin with. So here we go. This is a picture of the floor that you're about to see get absolutely destroyed by water underneath. This picture right here is the floor six months later. Not even kidding, guys. That is probably five, six inches straight up um, off the ground. What had happened was there had actually been a leak, a very, very, very small leak that has developed underneath the foundation. Now, this was a pier and beam. If you don't know what a pier and beam foundation is, I'll do a link to the end of the video of a pier and beam foundation video to show the difference between a slab and a pier and beam. So this was a pier and beam. So there was a space underneath and it had been dripping, dripping, 
dripping water. And there was so much moisture that had built underneath the floors that it literally, because these were real hardwood floors, it literally had soaked into the hardwood floors and the hardwood, because they're real wood, they wanted to expand. Well, there's nowhere to expand anymore. They're already up against the wall, so they can go nowhere except for up. Okay, and here's another picture of uh, just a different angle of it to show you how incredibly bad it is and what an awful trip hazard. This is right when you walk in the front door. Like, it goes into the living room, and then you have to step over this every time to get into the rest of the house. Uh, this is the hallway. It's running all the way down the hallway. I don't know, about 20, 25 feet. And um, it was getting worse by the week. So naturally, I had to uh, reach out to my insurance company and they gave me a really, really hard time about getting this covered. Um, and I said, you know what? This is a rental property. I've got to get this taken care of regardless. It has to be done. So I went ahead and started on the repairs to begin with. Uh, here's a picture right here. And uh, these are the real hardwoods. Uh, this is a picture of us actually had in the process of tearing it all out. And uh, you can see underneath that um, that was the foundation basically um, of the house was that, that wood you see underneath. And that had to stay there. Unfortunately, we couldn't lay our vinyl floors on top of that. I did not know that. So we actually had to, here's a picture here of the middle of the install. So we actually had to lay that brand new wood. It's about a half inch thick along the entire bottom floor of the entire house. Um, and then we had to put this stuff, it's felt paper here, and then we can put the vinyl flooring on top of that. This process was so much longer than I had anticipated and incredibly more expensive than I had figured. So this just goes to show you guys why inspections are so vitally important. And I'm not here to scare you guys. Guys, rental property investing is like no other business you can possibly be in, if you call it a business at all. Some gurus like to call it passive income, sitting on the beach. It can be once you get to a certain point, guys. It really can. Um, but they don't talk about, you know, the bad, the good and the bad about real estate investing. And I'm here to, to, to just kind of say, hey, you know, this stuff can happen. Let me share my experience with you and just stuff to look for. Basically, what I could have done is this, is when I was looking at that property, I already knew it was a pair and beam. I could have at least stuck my head underneath with a flashlight and I could have looked for moist areas underneath. So that is more of a point to this video is when you're looking at these properties, obviously get them inspected however if you're not allowed to inspect the properties and you feel confident and comfortable with doing this at least possibly bring a contractor by let him do some bids for you and um, stick your head underneath there and see if there's any active leaks because guys this cost me eleven thousand dollars i was able to get insurance to cover a lot of it um but I wasn't sure that they would cover it and they gave me a really, really hard time in doing so. Uh, okay, so this picture right here, this is the after. Now the other tenant, you know, the current tenant still lives there, or the last tenant I should say, still lives there, so that's his stuff. But right there where the table was, that's where that guitar was against the wall. So you can see how, how flat it is now. And uh, being that real hardwoods aren't in there anymore and we have vinyl, vinyl cannot soak up the water and will not expand. They're basically life proof. Um, I did a, another video on flooring. Um, I'll actually link that video at the end as well. So you have the difference between slab, pier, and beam foundation at the end, and then the difference, um, or what I recommend as far as uh, rental floorings go. Um, guys, uh, let me know what you think about the video. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell uh, so you're notified on all my new videos coming up. I like to make videos weekly. And uh, until next time, thanks for hanging out, guys.